These five small tweaks will instantly transform your render and hardly anyone talks about them. Whether you've been doing 3D for a while or you're an absolute beginner, these little mistakes can sneak into your renders and quietly ruin them. Today we're going to fix this render and we're going to turn it into this. You don't have to rebuild your entire scene, just make a few small tweaks and you'll instantly transform your render. Let's get into it. First up, texture scale. A beautiful material can look absolutely terrible. Always, always make sure to set real world texture sizes. You need to check references, look at how big a plank of wood actually is, or a brick, and then adjust your texture scale. So you could actually model a 3D plank or a brick or whatever your 3D material is, and then you can change your scale based off that. That's a really easy way. But even easier is to use a free add-on called Texel Density, which I personally use, and you can ensure that your texture is the correct size, and then apply it to all other meshes with the same material. After fixing the scale, you can already see a huge improvement in the render. The next step is clutter. A few props add realism. If you add too much clutter, it just completely kills it and it makes the scene messy and hard to read. You need to ask yourself what the point of the render is. If an architectural photographer showed up, they would probably insist that it was cleaned up before they took their photo. And then they would specifically move things around based off the composition. But an easy way to manage your props is actually to use a rule of odds. If you group your props in threes or fives it will feel a lot more natural to your eye and it will really help the composition. Think about the story. Why are these objects grouped together and why are they where they are? If you do this in the right way it will actually create a very strong narrative to your render but if you don't it can completely destroy it. So let's check out the before and after so far. Okay that's looking pretty good. So the next tip is to avoid perfect colors. In nature, you almost never get perfectly black blacks or perfectly white whites. They're always a little bit off. And in 3D, we want to make sure that we're following the same logic. So with your white walls, make sure to make them a little bit off white. They don't have to be super dark, but just don't use a perfect value of one. And for your lights or your window joinery or any metal color, make sure that it's not zero. It will give your materials way more depth and it stops them from feeling too fake. So after changing the white wall paint to a little bit duller and the black joinery to a little bit lighter, we're well on our way to fixing this render. Dark, dull renders kill realism. An easy fix for this is to use a fill light in your foreground. Now in this example, I actually ended up removing the wall behind the camera to bring in the natural HDRI light into the scene. You could do this with an area light, but I personally just like to use the HDRI. It just creates a little bit more consistency with your lighting and it's a lot easier to nail. So let's check out the before and after. This just makes your scene feel way more richer and dynamic instantly. Tip five is to stop guessing your artificial light color. You really wanna make sure that you're following real world values when it comes to your temperature of your artificial lights. And the easiest way to do this is by using the black body node in your emission shader. You should pick a value between 2700K and 3200K. I just find that range is perfect for getting a nice warm, cozy interior, but you can actually go a little bit higher if you want a little bit more of a cooler environment. And that's a super easy way to get physically accurate lighting without guessing. So let's have a look at the overall journey we made today, starting from before to after. So which of these five tips are you going to start with? Seriously, even just adding a fill light or changing the texture scale can completely transform your render and make it as realistic as possible. So make sure to let me know in the description which one you're going to start with. And if you want feedback on your ArcViz, you can actually share your work on my free Discord community. There's a link in the description. We've got a great community of 3D artists that are all helping each other to get better. I really look forward to seeing you there. And if you want to actually see how this scene is made, you can check out the box behind the scenes in the link in the description. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.